Hey, uh, right, there are a few reasons why I prefer soft luggage to hard luggage. First of all, you don't necessarily want it on your bike all the time, and soft luggage is far easier to store than hard luggage. It takes up less space. It's also much easier to detach from the bike and carry it around, like, you know, hotels, bed and breakfast, that kind of thing. And unlike ABS, aluminium, or glass fibre, it generally tends to fare better in the event of an accident. And of course, it generally works out cheaper than your aluminium cases. So, if soft luggage is your thing, these original Royal Enfield pannier frames are the perfect solution for carrying just about any bag. The only thing that is going to limit you as far as attachment is concerned is the available sort of straps and options that come with the luggage that you purchase. But don't be afraid to use heavy duty cable ties. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate the use in this video because filming already took a long time and sort of using cable ties, cutting them off, swapping bags around, etc. It, it was just going to extend production time way too much. But a bit of common sense and careful application of some heavy duty cable ties, which are immensely strong, I generally found will solve any attachment issues that I have with luggage and motorcycles. Now, obviously, these Royal Enfield bags are designed specifically for these pannier frames, but I don't want to get too deep into them because, as I've said, they are now discontinued. And as I already said in my last video, Hitchcock's motorcycles like these bags so much that they're actually in the process of producing a very similar bag themselves, which will be available over the next few months. And hopefully, as soon as they do become available, I'll be able to get hold of a pair to uh, review on this channel. Now, this isn't a paid promotion or anything like that. I'm not actually reviewing these bags. I'll just give you the make and the model, and I'll tell you whether it's a good fit or not, and whether it fits with the included straps or whether you'll have to use some additional cable ties. The majority of these bags are either leather or they're a mixture of leather and waxed cotton. Full leather bags should be considered fair weather bags, although in the case of all the trip machine bags, they do come with a rain cover. Most do anyway. Wax cotton and leather bags generally do have a, a lot more water resistance and should stand up to wet weather touring, although it might be an idea to uh, use a, a waterproof liner of some sort, even a carrier bag, to give the contents of the bag some added protection against the water. Now, this is the Lomo Water Sports uh, medium sized adventure style motorcycle pannier. And I've got to say, these were almost made for this frame. They have a really adaptable sort of mill spec mole system welded onto the back of the bag. They're made from welded PVC. They're not expensive, but they are incredibly tough and 100% waterproof. You'll have to excuse all the um, dirt and cobwebs. Uh, this bag was reviewed about four years ago and it's been languishing in the garage ever since. Now, last time I demonstrated the uh, waterproof or water resistance of these bags, um, firing a jet washer at them, I got a lot of pushback for wasting water. So I thought we'd do it the other way around this time. They sit well on the bottom rail of this pannier frame and the unique design of the strapping system means that it can easily be threaded through at the back. The main fastening straps wrap around the entire bag for additional strength and actually fasten at the front. This means that the webbing straps take all of the stress. It's not transferred onto the seams of the bag. It's a very safe and secure fit onto these frames straight out of the box. No additional straps or cable ties required. And as far as capacity goes, it holds a full 13 litres of water. Now, I didn't waste this water. I used it to water the plants afterwards.
as I said, 100% waterproof. Now, if these bags aren't big enough for you, Lomo also make the large version, which is a 30 litre capacity. Again, these can comfortably hold 30 litres of water. They are actually my weapon of choice for long distance touring. I've used these bags a few times. They don't cost much more than the medium sized bags. They are outstanding value for money. And I think they're a must have really for our unpredictable British climate, especially if you're traveling long distances. Now, I'm quickly going to go through the Trip Machine products. I'll leave links um, to all the relevant websites for everything that I show you here. This is their Heritage bag. They sent me this over a year ago. And it, it's like I say, if I'm not convinced about a product, I don't review it. So this has never been reviewed. Because I'm not convinced about the uh, wooden end panels on it in our British climate. I think it's more suitable for dry climates. It comes with a few strap choices in the bag and of course it's got those D-rings at the bottom. Um, there are enough options there to fasten it onto this rail, although I think some additional cable ties would be helpful. It is important to remember that all trip machine luggage is designed to be used without pannier rails, you know, they're, they're intended just to be tied directly to the seat or to the seat rail. But as I've found out over the years, with a little bit of ingenuity, you can make any of their bags fit onto these racks. Great for casual daytime use. Um, as I say, it's not a wet weather bag. Use of a couple of cable ties might be better than using the leather strap so you can get a good tight fastening at the top with this bag. And the same goes for the next bag, Trip Machine's Classic Day Pannier. This also doubles up as a satchel. It's got a similar fastening system on the back as the um, heritage bag. And it does actually look very neat and tidy on this rack. Now, moving up a notch or two to something a little bit more capacious. Made from a mixture of waxed millerine canvas and leather. This is Long Ride's Patriot Pannier. Again, it has a pretty decent attachment system on the back, although, again, I would advise probably using one or two uh, cable ties for security. I think this is actually the largest version that they make, very much in keeping with the classic style of a modern classic motorcycle. It's a real top closure with a leather reinforced bottom that sits well on the bottom rail of this rack. And one very useful feature of this bag is that it does have an underslung fastening strap that allows you to pin it down well and truly to that bottom rail on this rack. Right, last two bags which are both actually trip machine bags. First of all, the Outlander large capacity pannier. This is a really useful piece of kit. It can just be fastened to your seat rail without the use of any sort of pannier rail or pannier rack. Again, I would recommend using some zip ties to sort of pin it back onto the rack properly. But a couple of these large capacity bags and you can take everything, including the kitchen sink with you on your travels. Got some useful outboard open pockets with strap fastenings at the top for drinks bottles or fuel bottles. For camping fuel, that kind of thing. They also accommodate uh, a travel tripod quite well. A really nice bag, well thought out. And last but not least, the Trip Machine Rambler, a combined backpack and motorcycle pannier. Made from leather and waxed canvas. Again, quite a large capacity bag. This should be pretty much waterproof. It does fit well onto this rack. Again, I would advise maybe one or two cable ties. It does feature those rather useful little uh, speed sort of buckles uh, hidden by a conventional sort of traditional brass buckle. This bag has a really nice old school charm about it that I really like. Now, this is by no means the full extent of luggage that I've tried on this rack over the last four years. I, the, the truth is, Space is a big problem for me. I've given some of the bags that I've previously reviewed away to viewers that live locally, and some are stored where they're not easily accessible. The point that I'm trying to prove here is that the design of this rack is so good, 
it will lend itself to just about any type of luggage you care to try with it and it is immensely strong all you really need to do is find a secure way of fastening your luggage up against that vertical frame at the back the horizontal rail at the bottom takes care of the weight of the bag providing the bag with plenty of support so you're not reliant on those attachment points on rough roads with heavy loads. I really enjoyed yesterday because after I'd finished filming this video, I needed to do some shopping, so I took the opportunity on the Mini Mule to take it out and get a few days shopping at the local supermarket. Well, I say local, I chose the one that was furthest away. And then after I got my shopping, I just continued riding for a couple of hours. The 350 hasn't had the love and use that it deserves so far this year. And the, the reason for that is, I'm always going somewhere, I'm, I'm going shopping or I'm carrying equipment with me, so I tend to take the mule out instead of the mini mule. And it was such a relief yesterday to get out knowing that I've got the capacity to get what I need without being burdened by a heavy backpack or something like that that sort of spoils your enjoyment. And the thing is, I've got the ultimate faith in these pannier racks because I've had them fitted to the mule for almost four years now. They've never rusted, the paint's showing no visible signs of wear. They've carried a lot of weight over those years and they've been abused. But I know I can depend on them and that's the important thing about luggage. Because there's nothing worse than worrying about, you know, whether your luggage is going to come undone, whether you've fastened it on properly, or whether it's going to catch in the back wheel. You know that whatever luggage you're using, once you've attached it properly to this rack, you can then just forget about it and allow it to do its job. Right, uh, as I've said, I'll leave links to the websites of all the sort of bags that I've shown here. I'll leave you to peruse through the products and find the bags that interest you. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel I really appreciate it and I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber if you would like to show your appreciation in other ways you can always join uh, my patron where you can make a small monthly subscription or you can just make a contribution via the super thanks button down below I am, of course, going to be back next week. Um, we'll be taking a look at uh, Stage 2 intake modification for the Mini Mule. So, until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.